All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I just wanted to make a brief video on naming compounds and writing formulas from names of ionic compounds. So let's start on the left here with Mg2N3. Now, there are two to three just basic rules on how to name these ionic compounds. First thing, you have to realize that there are two element symbols here. All right, so I want to name both of these element symbols. Now, on the left side, I typically have the cation, which is positive charge. And on the right side, I have the anion, which will be negative char negatively charged. So, typically, I name the cation as is. All right, so I'm going to name this, whatever this is, as is. And then I'm going to name the anion, but change the ending to IDE change ending to IDE. So in still going down on these rules, on the left I have MG. If I look on a periodic table, I'm looking for the symbol MG. That is named magnesium. Okay. So left side is magnesium. If I look on the periodic table, N at first is nitrogen. Okay. So on the periodic table, N is nitrogen, but when I name it in a compound, since it's on the right side, it is an anion. And so on the right side goes my anions. I change the ending to IDE. So this whole O-gen becomes ID. So the name of this compound then would be magnesium nitride. So, quick recap of that. You name the left side metal or cation as is, and then you name the non-metal, which is on, always on the right side, anion, with the ending being IDE. Now, if I want to do the opposite of this, and I want to be able to write the formula from the name, I kind of have to go a bit backwards and realized where these symbols and elements and charges come from. So let's say I want to need, I want to figure out uh, the formula for strontium chloride. Well what I want to do is first identify symbol and charge. So if I look at a periodic table, I look for the names strontium and chloride. And what's going to be pretty nice is the periodic tables that you all have with strontium and chloride all tell you at the very top of the periodic table what the charges of these elements will be in that group. So strontium is right here. It's found in what we call group two. It will form a positive two charge. Then chloride, it's found over here in group 7. Elements found in group 7 will typically form a minus 1 or negative 1 charge. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to say strontium has the symbol SR. Chloride has the symbol CL. Chloride comes from, it comes from chlorine. But remember, it was the anion, so the ending was changed to IDE. So the... We saw on the periodic table that strontium will have a charge of positive 2, and chlorine or chloride will have a charge of minus 1. Now we have to remember that the sum of the charges in an ionic compound, do we remember what it's supposed to be? Is equal to 0. So I got to figure out how many of my strontiums and how many of my chloride ions I need to mix and match together so I get a sum of zero. So in looking at this, I have to see if I have to add more strontium or add more chloride that when I add up all the charges, I get zero. And looking at this right now, if I were to add the plus two to the minus one charge, I still have plus one left over. It's not zero. So there's two ways of looking at this. How can I get another charge that when I add it to positive one, I get zero? 
Well, in thinking about that, if I add negative one to this, to positive one, I will get zero. So how can I get another negative one? That could mean I need another chloride ion, Cl minus one. So I could add another chloride ion, that would give me two minus, and I have two plus, and that's zero. Another way of looking at this is the least common multiple. So what is the least common multiple of two and one? Two, one. Why do I want to find the least common multiple? Because I want the charges to be the same but opposite in sign. So the same magnitude but opposite in sign. So like positive two and negative two. Positive three and negative three. Positive eight and negative eight. I want the charges to look like this, right? And in order for that to happen, I need to find a least common multiple, okay? Right, so what's the least common multiple between two and one? Well, if I figure it out, it is two. So two, is, the two plus is already at two. How do I get the chloride to then become two? I need to multiply that by two. So if I wanna multiply this chloride by two, I need another chloride. And so now I'll have positive two, and I have two minus ones or two negative ones, I'll have negative two, and the sum of those charges will be positive two plus negative one plus negative one. That will equal zero. What is the formula then if I have one strontium and two chlorides? Well, the way that I would write that formula would be SrCl2. That is how you would write a formula. So basically what you do is you go from the name to the symbols and identify the symbol and the charge using the periodic table. Using periodic table. And then I want to figure out how I could mix and match my ions here that the sum of their charges together will equal zero. And so a simplified way to do that would be doing the least common multiple. And I got to get both of those charges to get to that common multiple number. And that I do by adding more ions. Let me do another example. And let's say I want to do, this time I want to do a transition metal. So let's say I want to do iron three oxide. Okay. Now remember, we do the Roman numeral. The Roman numeral for these transition metals is the charge. Okay, so if I want to identify the sy symbol and charge, iron is Fe, and the Roman numeral already tells me that the charge is positive 3. Oxide, that's oxygen. Oxide comes from oxygen. If I look on the periodic table, if I'm looking for oxygen, oxygen is in this group 6 over here, and they form negative 2 charge. So I'm going to write O. 2 minus. I'm going to just cu cut to the chase and saying least common multiple. LCM is least common multiple. What's the least common multiple between 3 and 2? If you don't know how to do least common multiple, I just write a bunch of numbers that are multiplied by my charge. So 3, 6, 9, 12. I kind of just go in factor. 2, 4, 6, 8. When did they arrive at the same number? Six is the least common multiple between three and two. So how do I get Fe3 plus to be six? I need two of them. So Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus. How do I get oxygen to be six? Well, I need three of them. O2 minus, O2 minus, O2 minus. The sum of this, these charges, plus the sum of these charges do equal zero. Positive three and positive three is positive six. Negative two and negative two and negative two is negative six. Positive six and negative six is zero. How do I write a formula that has two irons and three oxygens? Well, we use those subscripts, Fe2O3. All right, so remember, we use little whole number of subscripts to write Fe2O3. And that is iron 3 oxide. Okay? 
If I wanted to just do one more example of naming from the formula, and I'm going to do it with the transition metal, what if I wanted to name F-E-O this time? Okay. Well, if I want to name this, I already know that F-E is iron. O is oxygen. And the way that I name oxygen in compounds is oxide. But Fe is a transition metal. So they need the fancy Roman numeral. The way that I'm going to figure this out is I got to use oxide's charge to figure out the charge on iron. So oxide, that's O2 minus. What must the charge on iron be that when I add it to O2 minus, I get a zero charge, right? What plus negative two equals zero, right? Because there's only one Fe. That means whatever I add to the charge of Fe to negative two, I get zero. Well, mathematically, that means Fe must be positive two. And so for Roman numerals and naming this compound, I need to put a Roman numeral 2. Okay? So that was a, a brief crash course video in naming simple binary compounds, writing the formulas from the name, again, writing the formulas from the name, and then naming it from the formula. You may also, I don't like doing this, but you may also do the crisscross method, I'm gonna end with that, but it doesn't always work, so be careful of your charges and be careful of your simplest ratio. If I did wanna do the crisscross method for something like Fe3 plus and O2 minus, I just crisscross the number charge, right? I don't write the positive or negative, I just put the number, so the three is gonna go over by the O, the two is gonna go over by the Fe, and I get Fe2O3. This is the crisscross cheat. Okay? But look at what happens with Fe2 plus and O2 minus. You gotta be careful. If I were to crisscross the charge, I'll get Fe2O2. But what's wrong with that? These are not simplified. And to write ionic compounds, they need to be simplest ratio. Need simplest ratio of the subscripts. So what's the number that both two and two have in common that I could simplify? I could divide these by two. And if I do that, I'll get FEO, which was the original prompt that I had up here. Okay? All right. So if I went too fast, you could definitely re rewind or pause it or see what I could do. If there are any questions or concerns, let me know. If there was anything that I did here that was not clear, please don't be afraid to ask a question in the Remind or just jump a question on the Google Classroom. Alrighty, good luck in looking at this. Hope we all understand how to name and write ionic formula.